try something new out today in the realm of sketch transfers. So these are, this is a sketch that I have in my brainstorming sketchbook for a painting that I want to work on next. So this is just a very rough idea, concept, thumbnail as well, just so that I can figure out what the composition is. And once I do this, then I scanned this page and in Photoshop, then I went and played with the image some more and modified things, flipped things, accentuated some, erased, erased other parts. And this was the finalized composition that I decided on. So this was done mostly digitally because I like the freedom of being able to modify things. So I love sketching with actual pencil and paper for initial brainstorming con conceptual phase of things because I get, I don't know, something about it being more tactile and just being able to experiment with scribbly stuff. You can see all these other versions as I was trying to nail down my design concept it's actually a few pieces here that I might end up making. But in the end, you know, this is what this is what appealed to me the most, and I scan that in, and then I can play around with it without modifying the underlying elements. I can kind of keep the core aspects that I enjoyed the most while making the changes that I need for a finalized painting to really work. So yes, this was done mostly digitally. And then I transferred it over to my iPad, which I have here. That's what this is. It is on my iPad now because I'm going to attempt a method of transfer from this to my final watercolor paper so that I can actually begin to paint it. And this is Kenson's Moulin de Roy 300 pound watercolor paper. It's my current favorite. I'm going to try transferring that over to here via a method that I have not done before. If you've watched my previous YouTube videos, then you'll have seen some of my methods of image transfer and it can become very tedious with lots and lots of back and forth, which I enjoy actually, but this is something that might cut out one of those steps. So how do I plan on cutting out one of the steps? Well, I have here a new toy. It is the Etcher Mirror, which is, well, it comes in this box, so you know, it can break down flat. This is what it looks like all assembled right now. And it's something that you, you just pull out these tabs and it can be packed up again inside the velvet bag. So this is, this is the mirror. <laughs> it, is meant to uh, take the image that you have in your device, in your iPad or your phone or whatever, and sort of mirror it onto this side in a way where you can still see through it so that you can draw with your pencil over here on your paper uh, what you are seeing in here. So, <laughs> Yeah, it's a little confusing at first, but once I started using it, it made perfect sense. So I'm going to show you in use. I'm going to hopefully see if you can actually see the image in here and on the page. It might not be possible because of the way reflections are going to work in the video, but we're going to give it a try anyway. First off, I have my image here now in an app that Etcher supplies along with the mirror, which allows you to resize and reflect, you know, flip your image uh, so that, because because when it shows up on your, on the Etcher mirror, it's going to be reversed. So you have to flip it if you want it to face it a certain direction, just like any other mirror image. And once I have it in here, I did this little um, one inch marker, although it's backwards now because it's flipped. But I did that for myself because I sized the image on my computer to 12 and a half inches total. It's gonna be 12 and a half inch circle. And 
I used this one inch to mark how uh, how much I should how big I should have the image on my screen. All right, so that is at the correct size right now. So then I take my Etcher mirror and I put my iPad. Ooh, banging things here. Okay, into the cradle. And I've found that I actually have to turn off my overhead desk lamp in order for things to show up because there's a little bit too much light reflecting from that for things to be visible. So let me try turning that off. desk lamp is now off and yes you can actually see the ghost of the image on this translucent mirror now right you can kind of see it there it's actually a lot clearer for me when I'm looking at it sitting at my desk so you can also punch up the volume uh, the the contrast on your screen and that helps as well for the image to show with more clarity and what this allows me to do now is that because if I look through my mirror from this side, my eyes over here, I can see my hand and my pencil on my paper while at the same time seeing the ghost of the image on the mirror. So it allows you to, in effect, trace, trace this image directly onto your page, which is pretty cool. Because my finished painting size is 12 and a quarter inches and I can only display, you know, this small portion at a time, I have to line things up with the circle that I've drawn on my page, which I used a compass for. So I had already set that up initially. So I have a circle drawn on my page and now I'm just moving my mirror into position so that my circle boundary lines up. I already sized things correctly, so this is a one-to-one -one ratio now for size, and I just need to get the position correct. I'm gonna try seeing if I can do this sketching with my camera down here so that you can get a little peek of what's going on. It's a little bit tricky. Normally, just to refresh your memory about the method I use for transferring my art, my sketches onto my final workspace, um, is is that I have my, I, the beginning part's the same. I mean, I do my rough sketches and I scan it and then I take it into Photoshop and meddle around with it there until I am happy with how things look. And once I get to that point, I then tape a piece of tracing paper onto my monitor because I have I use a it's a it's a tablet monitor so I can actually just draw directly onto there and and I can actually lower my monitor so that it's horizontal and that makes it quite easy to do this but uh, before I used this Windows Surface Studio I used to actually print out the sketch onto paper and then I would trace that so you don't need to have a fancy monitor to do that technique but regardless, what I, what I end up having to do is somehow tracing with graphite the digital composition that I have created. And once I, once I have that traced onto tracing paper, then I take the tracing paper and I put it face down onto my final drawing paper or painting paper as it is this 
and you kind of just gently rub it, burnish it with the back of your thumbnail and that transfers the graphite from your sketch drawing onto the other surface, onto the watercolor paper. And then, oh, sorry, I'm knocking my camera here with my chin as I'm talking, because uh, this is in a very awkward position for filming. I don't usually film from this angle here, but it's kind of the only way you can kind of see what I'm doing underneath the mirror here. Um, where was I, where was I? Oh yeah. So once I, once I get it transferred roughly onto my painting surface, I can then go back and refine the sketch and drawing because the, the process of transferring the graphite leaves it very crude and, and a little bit fuzzy. So I do need to still draw over it after that to make sure that all the lines are exactly like I want them. So there's a lot of back and forth. So mainly with this process, what I'm trying to do is eliminate the uh, the tracing portion uh, where I transfer from my computer screen to paper, to tracing paper, to final paper. <laughs> and instead now I can just take it from my screen essentially directly onto my paper. And I, I like I like that idea. So if this works, I mean, that's the other component of this is that because my paintings are large and, and this mirror is very small, uh, my, my main concern is whether or not it will work for these larger scale type pieces and, and not just for small things. Even if it just works for small things, I mean, that could be pretty useful and I could definitely see myself using it for that. This angle might give you a better look at what I'm doing as I sketch. So it's pretty cool. What I see here as I'm sketching is a ghost image from the mirror. Oh, well, on the mirror actually is what I'm looking at. I'm, I'm looking directly into the mirror versus what you guys are looking at here is just what's coming out on my page and I, I see a little bit of my pencil lines as well on the page but because I'm I'm sketching so lightly I only see a little hint of it but I want to keep it light because I am going to go back and refine all of this as well because what I have here on my screen is actually a fairly rough drawing still All right, so here comes a tricky part now because I have drawn what I can see on my screen. So this is where I'm going to do, where I wasn't certain if things would work out. Uh, I'm gonna have to move my screen and mirror because I only have basically a quarter of my painting sketched out over here and there's still a lot more of it I need to sketch. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to shift what I see on my screen. So <laughs> here goes. Sliding things over and hopefully I have enough on my paper that I'm going to be able to line things up again. So I want some overlap with the part that I've sketched already. Let's see, let's move it over so I see her back and her arm. And then I have to shift the positioning of things and try to line it up again with what I have sketched so far. And I think I'm going to turn off my light here just so that I can see it better. Because like I said, the, the light makes it so you guys can see what I'm doing, but it actually is a lot more clear for me on the screen and on the, on the mirror when I don't have a light on. Okay, so that bird on her back actually is a really good thing to line up with. So this right here is a pretty good landmark and I'm able to use that to get things matched up almost exactly here. 
Okay, yeah, just a little bit of fiddling around and I should be able to get it to work, I think. I'm going to have to keep the lights really dim here. But I got things lined up, it looks like. I used the moon and the bird here as dual landmarks so that I could get things appropriately matched because matching up just the bird itself was not quite enough. And I'm not doing all the shading right now. I'm just sort of shading the edges so that I know the boundaries of where I have to do shading stuff later. But I'm keeping the exact, well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing the whole thing. I'm not going through and shading all of that. Okay, I think that looks okay. Oh uh, yeah, that, that's why the earlier stuff was showing up a lot better because I had, those were the parts that I had digitally drawn and so my lines were very dark because I had been drawing digitally with black versus the parts that were just directly from the original, original pencil scan. So those are just a grayscale, much less defined. So what works best, it looks like, well, what, all of this works. The pencil, pencil works just fine when I'm looking at it myself, but it does look a lot more clear through the mirror if you have very dark lines. And you can easily do that though by pumping up your contrast when you have the digital file. I didn't bother to do that with the pencil originally because this is my first time using this and so I wasn't quite sure what to expect or what would work and what wouldn't work. And like I said, I'm keeping a lot of this stuff really rough. I just really want to get the boundaries and the lines and things in. So that I know what I'm working with later when I do my more refined elements. I've shifted my device and mirror once again so that I can get all the way over to this side. Now this part is extra rough because later on I'm going to actually take some digital, not digital, I'm going to take some photo references of my own hand in order to get this much more exact. But for now, all I need is the positioning and the general pose. Yeah, things like hands and faces I feel are important to use references for, especially when you're doing hands in a closer up uh, scenario. You want to make sure that you get that right because hands are so wonderfully expressive. As I'm doing this, I'm learning on the go that it is best if you're going to do, if you're going to transfer large pieces the way I am right now, 
instead of a single piece where you don't have to move your device at all. Um, if you're going to do large pieces like this, it is best to have two very recognizable landmarks to position yourself each time. So I've been using this V on the back of her dress for a lot, matching up things as well as, you know, depending on where I am, I'll, I'll use like the line of the rose over here or the line of the back of her skirt. Something at least, you know, an inch or two apart so that you have uh, a, a couple of things to really hone in on and match up. And that way it looks like by doing that, you can actually line things up pretty well and get your whole large drawing transferred this way. So yeah, I think I think I definitely am going to be using this method now instead of going through the lengthy process of tracing from my screen. Here we are with the finished transferred drawing. It is very, very light on this page. I, I usually draw with HB.3 mechanical pencils. And I, I draw lightly because I want my finished sketch not to be visible. I want the painting to be seen at the end, the colors, and not the pencil lines. That's why I do that. Here was the original image that I was transferring. So now the next step from here is going to be refining this sketch and making the details and things much more specific. Uh, right now you see the roses I have basically stand in little scribble spirals there. There's one over there <laughs> and all over here because you know that's essentially what I did in this sketch too so no need to to do more than that transfer at this point because when I'm doing my refining that's when I'm going to draw them out as well as figuring out the details of the hand. I'm going to need to take some reference photos for that and maybe even for the back and face. So that was transfer via Etcher Mirror. And I'll post in the links where you can find this nifty device as well. Mm -hmm.